Well, all right. Well, let's go to the word. Y'all ready for the word? AdamandBeliever.com forward slash love him with your life eight. We're still in this because I just believe this needs to be covered. Love him with your life. We're all going to be tested in this hour. Amen? Amen. We're going to be tested and you need to be filled. Look at somebody and say, be filled with the Holy Ghost. You need God to speak to you. you. In this hour, you need to hear and know. Well, you need to know and hear the voice of the Lord. So you need the power of the Holy Ghost to speak to you. It's not an emotional thing. It's not a, you know, you ain't got to go wild and jump into the window and all of that kind of stuff. It's not any of that. It's you learning how God speaks to you. And you start that process off with the word. Amen. Turn off, look at somebody and say, turn off YouTube and open your Bible. Amen. Turn off Facebook. Facebook will keep feeding you stuff. That's why they call it a feed. They will keep feeding you. You, you got you to gotta get in the word because I'm telling you, all of these strange voices and prophecies and everybody knows what's going to happen and all of this stuff, all it is is a bunch of distractions to keep you from the word. Because we're getting into the time of persecution and different things. All that's in the Bible. You can learn a lot from how God dealt with his children in the word. Amen? Amen. 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 So get in the word. Turn that computer off. On Wednesday, you ought to be just free from it. Why are you watching movies on fast day? Hey, Amen. That's not a fast. Amen. But anyway, love him with your life. Eight. All the way up to eight. Okay, so let's get into this. <laughs> yeah, boy. Somebody loved the world just like this. They love the world and the things that are in the world just like this. Amen. And you know, some folks are just going to love the world. And there's nothing you can do. Because they don't believe. Amen. They just don't believe. There's nothing you can do when a person doesn't believe. You just pray for them. But don't let it make you stumble because you choose to believe. Amen? Because we all have that choice. Look at somebody and say, I choose to believe. All right. The Bible tells us that in the last days, because of sin, the love of many will wax cold. Meaning that people will love the world and what the enemy has to offer more than God. They will love sin. Because of sin, they're going to love the world. Matthew 24 and 12 says, and because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall do what? So this is telling, me, t telling us that people's love wax cold because of sin. People that want sin. Some people just want sin in their life. And because of that, they're going to dislike the people that are of the Lord. Right? You know, they got this new kind of Christianity now. I don't understand. Where you can just do whatever the world does and be a Christian. And God will understand. But you know, when you have that mindset, you're really keeping the power of God from operating. The Bible said that they would have a form of godliness. But do what? Deny the power. The form of godliness is getting exposed right now. The form of godliness doesn't work in the end times. People will begin to hate the ways of the Lord because God's way will stifle their upward mobility in the world. God is going to get in the way of what some folks want to do. 
Yeah. You know they contact me too. Brother, I just want to be a movie director. I just felt like I need to be a movie director. Well, you know you're going to have to compromise and all that. Well, God can use me in that field. He can use me in, the, in Hollywood. I'm just going to take the message. To, I'm going to come out the four walls. See, in the four walls. The four walls. Where, where did that come from? I'm in the four walls, so they always criticize me. See, brother, you got to get out the four walls and take it into Hollywood. Nah, I stay in the four walls. Because <laughs> God created these four walls. This is God's church. He made the church. How you going to diss the church just because you want to go do something? The only reason you talking about the four walls is because what you want to do can't be in here. I know I'm preaching. I don't want to hear that. You want to be an actor in Hollywood and do nude scenes and sex scenes and cuss and act a fool and then call yourself a Christian? You ain't saved. Oh, you're not going to get hacked. Oh, but you can't judge. I don't have to judge. Their actions are judging. How are you promoting sin? You trying to make the enemy greater so you can fight him? What side are you on? Man, I get tired of folks doing that. And I mean, they just, their feelings be so hurt. But brother, man, see, that's why people don't like you. Because you get it. You, you just, <laughs> does, hey, hey, I'm in good company because they didn't like Jesus either. Let them not like me. Let them just erect a whole nest where they can all buzz around and talk about me like a bunch of wasps I don't care is what I'm saying the truth just because it gets in your way don't make it a lie I mean we could have all went out there and done something and got paid I have no sympathy but brother Nancy you're asking me to give up I mean, just, and I just sitting there. Are you finished? Do you want to go to hell? Then give it up. Millions and millions of dollars. So you, what, what you want me to do? Just, 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 just give all this up? Yes. Jesus did the same thing with the rich young ruler. He was like, "What are you? So, so you telling me to give everything? Yes. If you're gonna come be with me, you ask me what it would take." to come be with me. Oh, the hand clap standing out. See, folks don't like this kind of gospel. It's too strict. I've been preaching the same way all my life. You go look at the old videos, you can look at all my different weight classes and you will hear the exact same thing. Ain't nothing changed. Has anything changed? No. no. Because the truth doesn't change. Amen. Amen. But people will begin to hate the ways of the Lord because of God's way. Because God's way will stifle their upward mobility in the world. They won't be able to be something in this world if they hold to God's truth. God's truth is going to stop you from being something in this world. Amen. You want to shine in the eyes of men? God's truth is going to stop you. Yeah. They're not going to want to hear God's truth because God's truth is going to go against the way they live. Yeah. So if you're carrying it, you're going to be like Stephen and get stoned. Amen. may not be physical stones, or it may be, but you're going to get talked about. And you better grow some thick skin in 2021. Amen. You better be able to handle people not liking you. Amen. You just better learn to like it. The Lord had dealt with me for years about that. Well, just not, not really caring. And the Lord always tells me, you know, always speaks to me and tells me, say, man, these folks, you know, the folks that are against you or the folks that don't like you or whatever, they never do that in your face. That's what God always tells me. Whenever I run into any of, oh, oh, hey, brother, oh, man, that work you're doing. That's all, oh, God, is oh, wow. Uh. So, brother, no, I heard what you said. 
want to talk about it? Well, see, now see, because you know, I mean, to each his own. I mean, everybody has their own idea. Oh, but they get behind a computer. Ooh. <laughs> get on the phone and, oh, they got the noise talking. But it, it's never in person. It's because they know. You can't be mad at me for what the Bible says. <laughs> How you gonna be mad at me? You can't even fake being mad at me for what the Bible says. The Bible says that. So if I don't say it, the Bible still said it. Can I preach in here? Folk don't wanna hear that, so that's the way I process. I'm like, oh yeah, well they can be big and bad away from me because I know if I run into them, that tail gonna tuck. I remember this female pastor, I might, have, I might have told this story before, but I, this female pastor, she, she invited me to come, and so when I went and preached at her church, I, I, I rebuked her in front of the church, because God told me to. And I rebuked her and told her, you out of order. I said that, you know, your son is supposed to be the pastor of this church. And she went to crying and this and that or something, you know, just, and of course, in person, she was with it because she knew it was the spirit of the Lord bringing order to their church so then I came home or whatever and I did a, a, a post a blog or something and I kind of talked about women pastors whatever whatever, whatever. And she got upset oh ooh, no that's it now oh he uh, 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 I gotta have word I, I gotta so so she she started uh, uh, calling me and she gonna let me have it so I picked up the phone I said, yes. She said, oh, pastor, okay, now. now. Now, enough is enough. I said, oh, okay. What's the problem? I said, what is it? She got quiet. Uh. I said, no, what? Like, what is it? What you got me for? Uh. She couldn't even do it. She couldn't even challenge the authority of the Holy Ghost. Couldn't do it. Couldn't do it. Sat up there and made up something else. I heard this preacher said that something, she might, yeah, you do that. You make something up. Because you know when I spoke it, it was the Holy Ghost. You don't have, there's no argument. That's what has destroyed the church. In case you didn't know, men that are afraid to stand up to Jezebel. That's, that's, that's why they home, church clothes and all that. They let Jezebel destroy the church. John 15 and 19. If ye were of the world, the world would love his own. But because you are not of the world, but I've chosen you out of the world, therefore, what's going to happen? The world hates you. There's not going to be, why do these folk keep prophesying? Oh, God showed me that Justin Bieber is going to win the thousands for the Lord. And all. Now he back hosting the VMAs, performing with sin, debauchery. His album is nasty. Full of sin. Oh, but he's the one that's going to. Why, why would God go use somebody that sold their soul to the devil to minister for him when he's got men that did not bow to the powers that be? He's got men that did not bow, did not take the money, did not take the bride, did not. They stood up and said, I'm going to stand for Christ. I'll forfeit the money. I'll forfeit the fame and stand for the Lord. Those are the men that God is going to use. Oh, when, I remember when Demi Lovato went and got baptized in the Jordan River. Ooh, the, all the prophecies started. The women. Women prophets. Who watch God is getting ready to use Demi Lovato. And he's going to use her to save many. And blah, blah. Now she came out binary. And has an LGBT talk show. I'm preaching in here. Yes. Amen. I know I'm telling the truth. Folk want the world saved so bad. I wish you wanted your children that saved. Why don't you want your husband saved like that? 
then you wouldn't have to get online all the time preaching for him. Can I keep going? <laughs> Church people will begin to side with carnality and immorality. Can you believe that? Church folks. I tweeted Bishop Paul Morton's tweet this week where he's defending abortion, calling Texas demonic because of our abortion ban. A bishop. He's the same one that told the church they couldn't come to church if they don't get the vaccine. You go on Twitter and address an abortion ban in Texas as a bishop. But you in Atlanta and you ain't never tweeted against homosexuality. You in, a, you in ATL, bruh. Every tweet would be somebody, get me out of Sodom and Gomorrah. Never tweeted against it. Ever. But church people will begin to side with cardinality and immorality when they love the work. When they want to be something. No one is perfect. Anybody in here perfect? Let me see you. And it better be an angel stand up. And the angels ain't even perfect. There's none righteous, no, not one. The angels, the one messed all this stuff up. <laughs> Genesis 6. They can get crazy too. No one is perfect, but we all sin and fall short. Anybody fail? Anybody sin and fail short? Amen. Who never fell short? See, no, we all sin, we all fall short, but we should always maintain that our error was sinful and not moral according to God's standards. You're gonna fall short, you're gonna sin, but know that you sin. Don't try to change sin into something that's okay. Don't try to change immorality into morality. Don't change the doctrine of Christ so you can do what you want to do. You got to keep the standard and the standard has to be God's standard. Even when we struggle to live up to it, God's standard must remain his standard because that's what makes him God. Revelations 20 and 20, 2 and 20. Notwithstanding, I have a few things against thee. Somebody saying, what does this scripture have to do with it? Everything! Because this is what leads to the carnality and immorality of the church. The scripture is telling you what happened in Thyatira, and that's what's happening in American churches. Because thou suffered that woman Jezebel, which calleth herself a prophetess, or puts herself in charge, to teach and seduce my servants to commit fornication. So it's the women that's bringing in the rules. The rules that are soft, feeling, sensual. Yeah. The woman is going to give the son the pass to wear the earrings. Or in Russell Westbrook's case, the skirt. I'm like, bro, your daddy was in your life. Why you got a big old pleated skirt on? with pleats that means you meant to do it you got a designer skirt on the E Saint Laurent big old man you know how big NBA players are them some huge dudes in a skirt where'd you get a skirt that long but it's the women that okay that the man will come in and say no we ain't doing all that food. We ain't playing that secular music in the sanctuary. But the woman to come in, well, Anthony Hamilton, you know, his stuff, you know, some of his stuff. 
That's why you need the man there to say, no, that's worldly. That's of the world. Then the woman will be like, okay, you're right. Thank you for straightening me out. Look at the women looking at me. What? Yeah, yeah. You will bend the rules because you're feminine. You're supposed to be. No big old butch. She ain't bending the rules. Ooh. I <laughs> but they got a big bull dagger. I don't even know what that be. That just sounds horrible. That means repent. Anybody with dagger in their name, repent. Somebody's gonna die. It's a weapon of death. <laughs> that sounds awful. Yeah, but that's the problem. Men couldn't stand up to them. Their own wives took over the church. Fat men tell me, see, they, they'd rather hear my wife. Uh, uh, the priest didn't hear me. But then you need to shut it down. This is way before COVID. Shut it down. You got a pandemic in your church. It's a pandemic in there. Y'all need a vaccine in that church. Folks would rather hear. What? I wish somebody would rather hear my wife instead of me. That means I am not serving any purpose. I just erase myself. I'm the one God called. Amen. I'm the pastor of this church because God called me the pastor. Me and my wife don't fight over the reins. Oh, let me get them. Are we going this way? We on the same page. Fully in agreement because we know what God has said. This isn't a platform for her to get up here and show her what she's wearing. Yeah. Wouldn't have ever had any of this. There wouldn't be no mind ministry if men had stood up. Because all the men sitting looking like, y'all, this is kind of creepy. This is creeping me out. These dudes with white faces. That's some foolishness. Y'all look like little devils, demons. Little Japanese, what them things go? <laughs> man, go wash your face. That's what a man would say. Come in here and try it. Watch me. I'm gonna say, boy, go wash your face. We want to hear a song, we just listen to the song. We don't need you up here popping to it in makeup. Wash your face. But the women, they you know, oh well, you know, it just yeah. yeah. It's Jezebel. If you're not ready to stand up against Jezebel, and Jezebel gonna give you a time. Jezebel scared Elijah. Made him run for his life. So Jezebel gonna, now you're gonna get opposed. You're gonna get fought. Because that witch is relentless. But if you call to God, you gotta do what God says. Amen. Amen. So if you're in here now, witch, we're going to fight. Because I'm going to do what God said do. Amen. I'm not scared of you. But she calls herself a prophetess and uh, taught and seduced the servants to commit fornication, but this is the one, and to eat things sacrificed unto idols. So they were basically, she causes them to bring things into the church that shouldn't be. Idolatry. Some of this stuff would have never been in the church if a man had stood up. I preach in here, Jack. I know, I, I know I'm stepping all in the stuff. That's okay. That's okay. That's what's wrong with the church now. Out of control women. They want what goes on in their house to go on in the church. They want the authority over the man in the church that they have in their house. That's your house. But this is God's church. 
Ooh, the spirit of vampire bat is in here getting mad. Somebody just said they see you try to hold her down. She's manifest. <laughs> She's going crazy. Oh. <laughs> Everybody think about you, it's the end time. Don't nobody have time to focus on your craziness. Give you that kind of attention in God's house. <laughs> a lot of preachers, a lot of preachers and leaders will fall away from the truth in order to appease the system that they desire to excel in. Fall away from the truth. So that they can excel in the world system. Y'all know that's what Herod did. That's why Jesus said, beware of the leaven of Herod. Because Herod was trying to use the church to excel and enhance his reputation. Playing both sides. Second Thessalonians 2 and 3. Let no man deceive you by any means. For that day shall not come. Except there come a What? A what? Falling away first. Isn't this something? Y'all see? Look at these young men in here. All the little young boys and young men. See how they look? They all look like little young boys. That's because we set a standard in here when we first started the church. And I, I met with the deacons and the elders and I told them, like, we're going to approach these boys. You ain't coming looking like a girl in this church. And we're going to make sure you look like you're supposed to look. And even when the mama don't like it, we'll talk to her too. That's our standard here. We maintained it and now look, it's caught on. Yeah, yeah. But once you allow, once you don't hold to the standard, the devil will continue to challenge it. That'll just make way for the homosexuals to come and the lesbians to come. And it's okay for you to come and get the word, but you ain't supposed to set up camp here. Not with, <laughs> not with saved folks. Yeah, you're supposed to get uncomfortable. <laughs> That's why we don't ever have to say nothing. I ain't never dressed no homosexual in this church, brother. You're a little soft. <laughs> you might have to find another. I never have to do that. I let the word do it. The word will address it. Yeah. And good, let the word address it. Maybe it'll save their soul. Can I keep preaching in here? Second Thessalonians 2 and 3. Let no man deceive you by any means. For that day shall come, shall not come, except there come a falling away first, and the man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition, of falling away. Y'all, we are seeing the falling away right now. For a bishop to tweet in defense of abortion? They will stand with Satanists, liberals, witches, and the devil himself in disagreement with God's laws. Somebody, like, well, but I voted liberal. I said, I just don't have nothing to do with voting. We're not talking about an election. We're talking about liberal behavior. And we as Christians, we don't behave that way. According to the Bible. You might be reading something else. Quit trying to make it political. That's what they did it for. They did that. They made it political on purpose. So that you would choose what opposes you over an election. That's all they did. And so now folks are scared to say liberal and conservative because it's tied to a political party. No, it's not. Not in my book. I didn't vote for neither one of them. But I know that I'm conservative. I don't trust Donald Trump as much as I trust 
was the other one, Joe Biden. Donald Trump was the one fast-tracking the vaccine. He wants credit for that. I don't trust none of them. They all Freemasons, I can't trust no Mason. My trust is in the Lord, amen? But I do know that I better live a conservative life according to God's morality in the scripture. Has nothing to do with the election. God is not liberal allowing you to do what you want to do and change your gender and abort babies and all of that. That's no, that's not God. Ephesians 5 and 11. And have no fellowship with the unfruitful what? What's your No fellowship. Well, people on my job aren't saved. I mean, am I supposed to quit? So I don't do it your occupation. Now, if your occupation is an unfruitful work of darkness, you are actor in a Tyler Perry's strip club drama, then you're supposed to reprove those works. Amen. All these slick back men, you're supposed to call that out. Somebody need to put some shirts on on this set. This might be my last day. Dry your chest off and put a shirt on. Yeah, but that's unfruitful works. You in a recording studio recording with foolishness? You Kanye ain't got Travis Scott in the studio with you? That's an unfruitful work of darkness. That boy is a demon. So you're supposed to reprove them. I'm pretty sure they don't want to be on your album if you reprove them. I'm pretty sure if you tell them now, you know the music you're making is going to send you to hell. And you're sending other folks to hell. Okay, let's record. They're like, what? What you got me in there with you for then? Where you going? I know I'm preaching in here. Why are you looking at me? You know, and I've learned folks want certain folks to get saved just so they can have their beats again. Yeah. Oh, he's saved? Oh, I'm downloading his album. You just want Kanye's beats. You don't even care about his soul. You just want Dunder. <laughs> Justin Bieber. They want Justin Bieber saved so that they can hear him saved. Yeah, that's all it is. But you got to make a choice. Thank you. Whoever start clapping way back that oh, that, that, that my man. So I knew that was Dre. That's my man. So, yeah! You got to make a choice. People that once believed in God's word are now siding with God's enemies and standing against what his word says. How are you siding with God's enemies and you want to believe in obedience to God's word? Peter 3 and 7. Ye therefore, beloved, seeing ye know these things before, beware lest ye also, being led away with the error of the wicked, fall from your own steadfastness. Look at somebody and say, don't fall from your steadfastness. Boy, remember that song, be steadfast, unmovable, always in the word. Y'all remember that? I had sung Justin Bieber or something like that. He been saved that long, Pastor. That sound like a whole 100. But you got to be steadfast, unmovable. Man, that's the definition of adamant. Yeah. But he said, beware. Look at somebody said, beware. Because the devil will just get the smallest thing and lead you astray. Led away with the error of the wicked. And then you fall from your own steadfastness. There was people in here that were steadfast. Now they fall.
Can I keep going? Matthew 12 and 30 says, he that is not with me is against me. <laughs> so there's no middle ground. There's no lukewarm. There's no pseudo saved. There's no compromise. You're either for him or you're against him. He says, he that is not with me. And when he says not with me, he means his ways. His rules, what he taught us. He that is not with me is against me. And he that gathereth not with me does what? Scattereth abroad. We're going to go through these things right now. These are the, this is the agenda that has crept into the church. And so I want to define these things so you'll know what they mean. You know, a lot of times the church just says hey, abortion is wrong and is that, but the scripture is the one that says that. So we're going to go to the scripture with all of these things. Amen? Abortion. No man has a right to stop the heartbeat of God's creation. The Bible tells us in Proverbs 6 and 17 when it lists the things, the seven things that God hates. He starts off a proud look. The second thing, a lion tongue. Some folks can't even get past that one. You're just a liar. You know if you're talking other people's personal business, you're a liar? Because you don't know. <laughs> you don't know. If you got to be telling what you heard, you're a liar. Because you don't know. That's why we preach against that in here. You wasn't there. You don't know. Most of the time, you listen to a witch anyway. I just, I don't know if there's honest witches. It's not the Wizard of Oz. There's no Glinda the Good Witch. No, they all look like that green one. What was her name? I don't know, but ooh, he, he, my pretty. That one, that's what they all look like in the spirit. And that's who you listening to. That's a lying tongue. Because you don't know. I heard. They say. They say, you know, they say. Who is they? Shut up. Because you don't know. That's a lying tongue. That's a lying tongue. And the crazy thing is, look at your nasty business. Why you got your mouth on somebody else? Look at you. Look at you. Man, let me get to the one that I put this up there for. Oh, but something jumped off on that lying tongue, didn't it? But the third thing, hands that do what? Shed innocent blood. Children are innocent. Oh, God, a child was conceived. I put on Twitter, I got friends that are preachers that were victims of incest. Their mother was raped by their own father or stepfather, uncle. Had the baby. They preachers of the gospel now preaching against abortion. Because that's a life. What if somebody had terminated that life? So that's an innocent blood. That's why we don't do it in the church. And if you did it before you got in the church, you don't do it no more. God forgives sin, but you, you, you that, that's a part of my life that's in the sea of forgiveness. If God isn't bringing it up, I'm not bringing it up. That God heal that and you move on. But don't even consider it again. You should be an advocate against it. An advocate for life. Amen. It's important to God, too. Yeah, this was child sacrifice in the Bible. The LGBTQ. There's some more letters. I just, I just stopped there. Just keep adding letters. I know pedophilia is in there now. Romans 1 and 28. 
tells us what's wrong with homosexuality and lesbianism. It's the Bible, y'all. It's the Bible. It's not, it's not my, look, it's not me making these rules up. The Bible tells you you can't be that way. And if you never read the Bible before, your body tells you something is wrong. <laughs> you don't need the Bible to teach you that something is wrong. That whiskey bottle that you drink every night so you can get drunk to change your mind and try to train your mind to accept something that nature is rejecting. I know I'm preaching. But Romans, if we go to the word, the word will straighten it out, even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge. God gave them over to a what? A reprobate mind to do those things which are not convenient. These are the people, the Bible said, that the men went after the men and the women began to go after the women. They did not retain God in their knowledge. That's how you reject God in your knowledge, by turning to your own kind. Because that's against God's creation plan. Yeah, so you're basically saying God messed up and his creation was not good. And what he made, he didn't make well. So he gave them over to what they wanted to do. That's why they're not happy being on the down low. No, they want to march and force it on your children. They have an agenda. Yeah, it's an agenda. But the Bible calls it sin. Amen. All right, folks. Religious, cultural, racial supremacy. All religious, cultural, or racial supremacy. It's all a sin when you think you're better than somebody else. Yeah. Yeah. Now, now let, me, let, me, let me straighten this out. Jesus is the only way. God is supreme. So I'm not talking about other religions. But we're not going to condemn a people group of a different color or ethnic background to hell because they're not the same color as another group. Amen? Or they don't obey the Sabbath or they don't do this or do that. No, 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 we're not doing that. The Bible tells us not to. Colossians 3 and 25. But he that does wrong, according to the Bible, shall receive for the wrong which who did? He had done. So one white man is not cursed because of what Esau did? I just preached, didn't I, Del? I know I did. He said, but he that doeth wrong shall receive for what? The wrong who did? That he did. So you can't condemn a whole race of people because of what they did. Just because some white people enslaved some blacks? You can't hate all white people. You can't condemn all white people. You can't indict all white people. Truth be told, what did the Negroes do? Who did they enslave? Didn't they enslave God's people? And they was the darkest Negroes. The darkest of the dark. Raw was baking them every day. And they enslaved God, so we know, no, 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 no. So we're not going to suffer for what Pharaoh decided to do. Amen. Amen. What Ham did. No, he said, he that doeth wrong shall receive for the wrong which he hath done. And there is what? No respect of persons. That means no matter what color you are, you my brother. (laughs) 
Amen. We don't ascribe to none of that foolishness. Black, Hebrew, Israelite, Negro, land, all of that foolishness. We don't subscribe to none of that, so don't you try to get up in groups and talk about that. Feminism and female authority. Oh! Oh! I just did a whole section on that, so I don't have to take long. But 1 Corinthians 11 and 3. But I would have you know that the head of every man is Christ, and the head of the woman is what? The man. The man. Won't you go on and submit to him? Mm -hmm. There's too many people in here. I got to preach this. Somebody stumbled in here and didn't know the truth. That a man is the head. Quit manipulating him. Why would you want a man you can manipulate anyway? Certain looks you give to get your way and jumping out of a moving car. Ah! Oh, I guess she mean this. Putting on a show in a front. Get somewhere. Do what he says. Trust him to lead you. You know God ain't listening to you when you pray and you act like that. Pull the car over. Pull that over. We on a busy freeway. I don't care. I'm getting out. You've been married 30 years. You still acting like that? Ooh, I would let you out. I'm out. I'll wait for the semi <laughs> to just... Um, wrong with you <laughs> why are you acting like that why are you trying to die over that you turn your own house up and the worst thing is you oh you're ruining your children all you're gonna do is have your daughter striving because they don't want no parts of that The head of the woman, according to the Bible, is the man. Yeah. And ain't nothing wrong with that. And if you're a real lady, you don't have a problem with that. I mean, I had brothers tell me, and see, we had to lead a check. Of, man, you, you know, my wife, she just, she didn't like the things you was teaching to me, because, I mean, it just made her feel bad. All right? Y'all know I'm good with that? That's one less witch. I'm good. Like, I am good. Get them all, Lord. Get them all. Man, I'm going to forget you in minutes when you leave. Minutes. But this is of the devil, and this is torn the church completely up, especially the African American church. Setting the woman up as the cold pastor, whatever that is. I don't even know what that is. Just because the man is called don't mean the woman is called a pastor. Because that's not biblical. So where did that come from? They're just folks just doing what they want to do and they don't understand what that's going to do to the future church. I know what it's going to do. It's what it's done now. Right now. Closed it down. Because the strong man is bound. A strong man bound by his own wife. Sex outside of marriage, we don't ever advocate that as believers. Amen. I don't care what I'm in love. Then you better get married. I mean, ready. Then you ain't ready to be sexually active. I mean, why would you want to be on the road to being a slut? Why buy the cow when you get the milk for free? You gotta go to the old, old stuff. That's giving it up. No. You're supposed to be married. There's supposed to be a commitment there. A lot of these folks doing it because they dating too young. Yeah, you're going to go against the pastor and let your kids date. After I done already done a whole video on it that God gave me, but I guess God didn't give me that part. 
So you got some better advice? Okay. We'll see. Turn the... You're going to have a sexually active team. I'll preach that in here. I don't care. I know I'm crazy. It's the truth. What are they getting together for? Why are you advocating that as a parent? Oh, the rules in here. See, that's the problem. Huh? You in the wrong church. That's the problem. Sex outside of marriage is a sin. Ephesians 5 and 3. But fornication, all uncleanliness, covetousness, let it not be named among you as becoming saints. So just stop doing it. If you was doing it up to this morning, stop, stop doing it. Amen. Ain't gonna do nothing but bring a bunch of pain in your life anyway. Take it from us, that messed up. Amen. Take it from us. You better hear our advice. Some of us did the fool. And it didn't profit us anything. And we wish we could erase that part of our life. Amen. Can, can I be honest in here? Weed. Weed is a sin. If you smoking weed, you sinning. Look, somebody said, but it's of the earth. Yeah. Cocaine is of the earth too. Bruh, it's all poppy. Crack is fully biodegradable. It will go right back in the ground. Crack. Flowers just, hmm. all the flowers around it. That plant just. <laughs> but weed, strong drink, recreational drugs, we don't do that as believers. Amen. We don't advocate it. Amen. Had a real famous guy. He called me and he was like, man, they want me to. Do this weed campaign, this C, not CBD, but the other one. The real weed, the TH, what is it called, nurse? Yeah, that one, that's the one that gets you high. And they want me to, they just want to put my name, my brand on it because, you know, he's, he's famous or whatever. And I said, bro, you can't do it. So he hung up the phone. Then he called me with the dude, I guess the dude that was going to do it, offering to him millions and millions of dollars to put his name or whatever he called me because he wanted me to explain i think let, jonathan was you in the car when that happened and i think i was talking to him when you was in the car he was just talking he was like man i need you to explain to me and i know he had the guy on the phone i need you to explain to me exactly what you said so i just usually i just be like bro we already had this conversation but the holy ghost told me to do it again so i just went in i mean i went in on how it's a sin, you can't be, you know, uh, uh, promoting unfruitful works of darkness, whatever. You just got to stand and tell that millions of dollars that I can't have you. Right. And the dude came on there that was trying to talk to him. Oh, oh, see, uh, you know, I've never looked at it that way. I said, brother, you started a whole weed company and you didn't check with the Lord and you call yourself a believer? Yes, sir. So he's like, well, wait a minute. So, so what am I supposed to do? Stop selling weed, you pusher! Bro, you a drug dealer. Get off my phone. What you supposed to do? <laughs> that was like a few months ago. Oh, crazy, man. First Peter 1 and 13. Wherefore, gird up the loins of your what? Man of your mind and be what? Sober. Don't nobody make good decisions high. 
You're high because of your bad decisions. You're trying to escape your bad choices. Be sober and, uh, and hope to the end for the race that is to be brought unto you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. Gird up the loins of your mind. Get control of your mind. Don't be drunk using drugs. Smoking weed. Isn't it funny that the world didn't go crazy until they legalized weed? Once they start legalizing weed and all that, that's when all this foolishness started happening. Think about it. You don't think they're linked? Idolatry and false God pledging. We talked about that last in the last one. First Corinthians 10 and 21. You cannot drink the cup of the Lord and the cup of devils. You cannot be partakers of the Lord's table and the table of devils. So you can't pledge to a false God. You can't pledge to a false God and act like you didn't mean it. You just did it to get the job or to get the money. You can't do that. <laughs> and why do you want money that didn't come from the Lord? How long is that going to last? How well is that going to benefit your family if it didn't come from God? Can I keep preaching in here? Ooh, it's a bunch of stuff. Witchcraft, yoga, sage burning, meditation, manifesting, conjuring, readings, horoscopes, charms, crystals, Tattooing, ritual piercing, all of these things, the church got soft on all of them. There's in one church and they were doing a memorial service for the saints that had gone on, Sister Clee, they had gone on. Happy birthday, Sister Clee. Beautiful lady, just a beautiful lady. You did good, Elder. You did good. She saved Joe. No, I'm just <laughs> But I was in this church and they were doing this memorial service for the saints that had gone on or whatever. They came in there with a candle and this a piece of the clothes from the person that died and laid it on the chair where they sat. And they said, we call forth. You know, once you say call forth, <laughs> I'm starting the car up. And I'm on the organ, watching it, so I don't know what to do. I don't know if I need to start playing the Adams Family or what on the organ. The monsters. We call forth the spirit of the whatever, whatever, and they doing all this whatever. whatever. So after the service, I'm like, Pastor, dude, uh, things got a little wow, didn't they? And of course, it wasn't his idea. It was the first lady's idea. <laughs> horoscopes and charms. And you know, Christians, we don't follow horoscopes. That's witchcraft. Oh, let me see what's going to happen in July. I can tell you what's going to happen in July if you act right. God bless you. If you act a fool, fool going to follow you. Ooh. You don't need to read a horoscope. Just act right. You don't give the devil that kind of power over your life. Charms and crystals. You better check your necklaces and earrings and everything. You better check them out. Bring them to me, I'll tell you. Some of them need to be cast away. Somebody done gave you something, you don't even know what it is. You just know your head keeps spinning around every time you try to take a nap. Charms and crystals and tattoos. And I know a lot, the majority of the people in here got some kind of tattoo somewhere. You rebuke the spirit of it. You, amen, you denounce. You denounce it. Don't go get another one. I mean, gospel artists all on Instagram with fresh tattoos. Well, you got a fresh tattoo at 50. Can your skin even be pulled together tight enough 
to draw on it like that. <laughs> this is it. Okay. <laughs> it's time to bring this message. But charms and Chris <laughs> and piercings and all of this ritual piercing and stuff. All this stuff crept into the church because the strong man was bound. How do you spoil a man's goods unless you first do what? Bind the strong man. When that witch seizes that man's authority and does it in his name. Remember Jezebel did it in Ahab's name. She sent letters to have Naaman killed in his name. Deuteronomy 18 and 10. There shall, be not, uh, there shall not be found among you anyone that maketh his son or his daughter to pass through the fire, that's killing them, child sacrifice, or that uses divination, divination, that's yoga, divination. You're divining when you perform yoga. When you get down and stretch and do the hidden cricket, whatever it is. If it's yoga, it's worship. You can stretch without yoga. Use it. Use it, divination. But that's a divine sage burning. You're clearing that, cleansing the atmosphere. Smoke don't cleanse an atmosphere. Smoke get the atmosphere alive. Where you been? Every club they start to smoke. That, that fired up, get all the demons riled up. That's close to hell. Burning. You don't do no cleansing with smoke. That's not in the Bible. Meditation manifests. All this stuff is divination, conjuring, reading. Somebody reading you? And what you need somebody to read you for? You know you crazy. You know everything that's wrong with you. They don't need to look at your, give me a hand, baby. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Ooh, this says you dumb. How did you know? Ooh. <laughs> stop. Anybody could have told you that. Could have asked the postman. Postman would have told you. That's all divining. <laughs> Observer of times, that's somebody that re watches the horoscope, watches the sun, watches, uses astrology. Or an enchanter, or a witch, or a charmer, or a consulter with familiar spirits. Or a wizard, or someone who talks to the dead. That's a necromancer. Grandmama's dead, you don't talk to her. Granddaddy, you don't talk to her. You go to the grave site, you don't have a conversation. There's no need for that. The beauty of it is though, if they have given you wisdom and passed on, that's, that's where the Holy Ghost steps in to bring back to remembrance the things that they taught you. You're going the wrong way. You're supposed to be remembering what they taught you. And the way a person lives on in you is through your behavior. Not by you talking to them. Won't you do what they say? Be a good example of what they taught. That's how their memory will live on. Then I'm preaching in here. Finally, the worship of man, image of the beast. And the image of the beast is celebrities, athletes, performers, and actors. These folks go crazy over. Isaiah 42 and 8, I am the Lord. That is my name and my glory will I what? Not give to another, neither my praise to what? Great members, you need to quit looking at celebrities' IG pages all the time and wondering, ooh, she married so and so. I wonder how this baby gonna turn out. And I'm just, you're all in the celebrity's business, giving them God's glory. They're too important to you. Those are humans just like you. Amen. Summary. 
Y'all got preached to today. The church has lost its way. Many of them are so infused with the New World Order that they have shut down or mirror the same stipulations as secular venues during this pandemic. Because they have never truly trusted God with their health. Y'all listen to this. They trust man with it. You can't, tell, you can't talk to them about no vaccine or whatever. And they've trusted man with their health all the way up until now. They wanted the past to eat what they wanted, live like they want, not take care of themselves. They wanted the past. Over there, preach the gospel, speak in tongues, but they ain't taking care of themselves. Yeah, and then because they weren't taking care of themselves, their trust was in man. They want the doctor to solve what is wrong with them. Many have been under a doctor's care, taking permanent prescriptions. I mean, You'll take this for the rest of your life. Now, sometimes you take things for a certain amount of period or whatever, uh, uh, for a certain period or whatever. You have to do things to get out of certain situations, whatever. My holistic doctor will tell you that. She'll tell you sometimes you're so far gone, you're going to need, you know, need a little pharmacos. Just to get you out of this situation, whatever it is. Sometimes you don't. If your faith is there, sometimes you don't. But sometimes you need something to get you out of there or whatever. But these folks are given permanent prescriptions like they can see the future. Brother, you're going to be on this for the rest of your life. How do you know? Yeah. That is witchcraft, Elder. Yeah. They just planted a seed in you that you can't get out of your mind. Yeah. So they can get paid off of it. Permanent, taking permanent prescriptions and doing whatever the doctor tells them. They fail to realize that most physicians are profiting from their illnesses. There are some good doctors. We got some good doctors in here at ABC. So there's some good doctors. All of them aren't doing that. But most of them are profiting, giving folks stuff that they don't need. Instead of taking care of themselves, eating properly, and being proactive about their lifestyles, they have been slothful, gluttonous, and totally ignorant to good health practices. Amen. Now, because there is a virus that capitalizes on pre-existing health conditions, they are wholeheartedly trusting their health to the New World Order. This makes them prime candidates for a transhumanism project to be injected into them to control their thinking and behavior. Yeah. Many of them no longer behave like people of faith, mm, mm, mm. but people in fear. They shun unvaccinated family members as if something is wrong with them. Can I say that again? They shun unvaccinated family members as if something is wrong with them. Oh, no, you, no, no, no. You can drive by, I'm a wave through the window. But you can't get out. Can't come in. <laughs> they cannot even see the New World Order and Antichrist plan that is controlling them. They do not believe there is anything wrong with the liberal agenda of the elite. Many of them hate Trump so much that they have become allies with God's enemies. <laughs> now, let me, let me get this straight. I ain't saying God, Trump is from God. I'm just saying they hate Trump so much that they'll line up with the witches. They have totally switched sides for the sake of worldly validation. They have forgotten the healing power of God. They have forgotten how holiness is right. They have placed earthly success over godly principles. Many of them have totally fallen away from the truth. And unfortunately, if their faith is in man, then they are not ready to see Jesus. In order to see Jesus and go back with him, you have to see him now. <laughs> You have to see him now. You have to see his way as the only way. You have to see his rules as your rules. You can't accept the world's agenda and be with him. It's time to make a choice. Do you feel you have gone too far to change things? That's what loving him with your life 
is all about. Loving him so much that you're willing to change whatever is necessary, no matter how far gone you are to see him. Amen. Amen. Second Timothy 4 and 3 tells us, man, this is so prophetic right here. For the time will come. For, it should just say, for 2021 will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. The preacher that's preaching the sound doctrine, they have to try to destroy. They will not endure it. But after their own lust shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears. And they shall turn away their ears from what? The truth. Church folks, turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned unto lies, fables. But watch thou in all things. Look at somebody and say, watch. Watch, watch thou in all things. Endure what? Afflictions. Endure. You'll get through it. Endure. Afflictions. Remember when you was going through something and you couldn't see the other side of it? You thought that was it. But you endured it. And you got, look at somebody say, I got through. Just like you got through that, you're going to get through this. So endure afflictions. Do the work of an evangelist, he's telling Timothy. Make what? Full. Full proof of thy ministry. Everyone stand to your feet. People don't want to endure sound doctrine. These kind of messages, man, folk don't want to hear this no more. No, they want to, they want to, Miracle and season and get your breakthrough and God is getting ready to take you from the pit to the palace. Ain't no more palace. Ain't no more palace. Just pit. It's just pit now. But are you going to serve him in the pit? You got to be ready to serve God no matter what. Endure afflictions no matter what. Amen? Amen? Everyone just bow your heads. I'm not going to call you up today. I just want to pray because I just believe a lot was said today, but I just want to make sure that you are as adamant as the title of this church is Amen. so that during these end times, you can stand in this hour so that your minds don't get caught up thinking about the wrong thing and focusing on the wrong thing, but you can stand in this hour. Y'all times are tough and they'll probably get tougher, but we have to stand. We have to stand. So I just want to pray and encourage you to stand. Put your heads bowed. Father God, we just thank you, Lord. Thank you, God, for a word like this, a message like this. God, a message that just draws the line in the sand. A message that specifically shows us what is wrong with the things that are a part of the New World Order and why we as believers can't be a part of it and how your word just illuminates it and shows us what it is that we should be doing. So God, right now, we just repent before you. We just ask for forgiveness for even just siding with any of these things that were mentioned today or just doing anything, God, that was against your will for us, for our homes, for our lives, for our children, for our families, for our own bodies. God, just forgive us for slothfulness and gluttonous and just all the things, God, any sins that we've just frequently committed, whatever it is, we ask for forgiveness right now. And we ask, Father God, that you would strengthen us in this walk so that we can walk uprightly in this hour with confidence knowing that you're going to take care of us. No matter what they try to scare us with, 
no matter what scare tactics they use, no matter what they say, no matter what Joe Biden says, no matter what Fauci said, no matter what they're doing, all of this wickedness that is going on, this strong delusion, help us to stand. Help us to stand, Lord, on the things that we know to be right, on the things that we know to be truth, on the things that we know to be of you. Help us to stand. And I pray even right now, God, for clear understanding of your word. Help us to fall in love with reading it. Help us to fall in love with, with just spending time there instead of on the internet, instead of on our phones, instead of, Father God, on other things. Some of us just work too much and some of us are striving too hard. and We don't have the time, but God, we need that time. So we pray right now. I pray right now as the pastor of this group of people and those that are under the sound of my voice. Father God, that we would develop a newfound love for your word. A newfound love for your word. Restore us back. Let us go back to our first love. The time when we had the zeal, the time when we had, would just make the time. Father, we've gotten so laxed and we know right now it's more important than ever before. So I pray that God, each and every person under the sound of my voice, that you would do that. Grant us that, Lord. Work through us. And even this fast that we're on, and just some of us just paying attention to our health now like we've never done before. And God, just give us grace and mercy in these areas to help us, Lord, to prepare for your return. We believe you are coming back for us. So prepare us, prepare us, so that we will be ready when you come. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Hallelujah. All right, you may be seated. Y'all enjoy this message? Amen.